Later this evening, we'll present Holyfield versus Lewis. And good evening, everyone. I'm James Brown. Happy to be alongside my partner once again, Roy Jones, the light heavyweight champion of the world. Good to be with you again, buddy. Thank you, James. Good to be with you also. You know, you and I were there on March 13th when these two fought the first fight. And let's be honest, it was not a good fight and certainly a very controversial one in terms of the decision. What's the likely scenario tonight, Roy? Well, the likely scenario tonight is that that won't happen because the Nevada Athletic Commission has made changes. People have made changes. The fighters have made changes. And I think everybody wants to clean that up. Everybody wants to make up for the mistake that was made on March 13th. So I think tonight we're in for a much, much better night. And you've always called it like you see it. You expect the two fighters to give a better account to themselves as well? Uh, most definitely. Both fighters are coming in here tonight to prove that they were not exactly where they wanted to be on March 13th, but tonight they will be there. So I look for a much better effort from Evander Holyfield, and I look for a little bit better effort from Lennox Lewis also. I know I am, as well as the viewers, looking forward to your insight and candor, as you always give us, Roy. Thank you. All right, now let's take you downstairs ringside to the guys who will be calling the action for tonight and all the fights tonight. Big George Foreman, Larry Merchant, and our anchor, Jim Lampley. All right, thank you very much, James Brown. Third time this year that we've gotten ready, this group, for what might be an earth-shakingly historic event in the sport of boxing. Let's hope the third time is the charm. Larry Merchant, Roy, and James have already touched on some of the differences between March 13 and tonight. What, in your view, are the most essential differences? First, that we're going from a showdown to a show us. Show us that you can get, a, get it right this time. New York was all feverish anticip anticipation for the first fight. Las Vegas is a kind of lukewarm, but getting a little warmer curiosity about the rematch. Lowered expectations. Se secondly, what we have here is a, d is a big difference in the rematch being called by me a do-over. As kids, we called something you did again and tried to get right a do-over. And happily for the boxing fans, do-overs help the boxing fan because usually they are better, more active, more decisive, and sometimes more dramatic. That is raising the expectations. And finally, as Roy alluded to, the Nevada State Athletic Commission has started a, prospect, a process that is seizing back some of the power that had been ceded to these mobs that have been running boxing, official sanctioning mobs, and they have appointed all three judges. As it happens, however, Jim, they are the usual local suspects this time. Well, we've, we've seen them before. We know their work. Maybe, maybe they won't be necessary. Of course, the title at stake, heavyweight champion in the world, I can lick anybody in the room, is a title which was twice held by George Foreman in his extended and continuing youth. George, uh, we'll talk later about Evander Holyfield and what he has to do tonight to make it different from March 13th. Before the first fight in New York, there were questions about Lennox Lewis's fortitude, about his ability to show up for a big event like that, about whether he could master a well-known American fighter, one with greatness in his career, Evander Holyfield. Did Lennox answer all those questions? And if so, what does that give him going into this fight? He answered all the above. You know, he did it very good, as a matter of fact. He didn't, now this time, all he needs to do is show up, as Larry said, and do again do all over again and I think he's capable and he, he's, he's proven it once he can prove it again so Lennox's job is just to be himself the way he was March yes, 13th don't get any more sophisticated than he was the first time and go out and do the same thing that's his job well we'll see if Lewis can do that later on tonight no doubt he'll be facing a slightly different challenge as you can't expect Holyfield to be exactly the same and we're going to start the evening with a heavyweight and let's go to Holyfield's dressing room for referee's instructions if your mouthpiece comes out of your mouth, I want you to keep fighting, protecting yourself. And there's a low, go back to the corner, get it put right back in. Okay, I want you to watch your head and your elbows inside. There's no three knockdown rule, there's no standing eight count. If you're the champion of the world, I expect you to protect yourself like a champion. When I say okay, great, you doing, step back, protect okay, yourself. I'm your referee for this fight. I want this fight you, clean. I'm here to protect okay? you. Okay. Any questions? All right, good luck to you. Questions? All right, good, go. Let's go listen to Mitch Halpern's instructions to Lennox Lewis in his dressing room. Punch you, kidney punch you, or anything low. If you score a knockdown, I'm going to send you to a neutral corner. You got to stay there, Tate, to come out. If you do score a knockdown, don't hit the guy when he's down, period. Okay, if your mouthpiece comes out of your mouth, keep fighting and protecting yourself. When it's a low, we'll go to the corner and get it put back in. Okay, I want you to watch your head and your elbows inside. All right, there's no three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. You're a champion of the world, and I expect you to conduct yourself like a champion. So when I say break, take a step back and protect yourself. 
right? This will be a good, clean fight, right? Any questions? Really? All right. Good luck to you. Well, George Foreman, one of the questions that surrounds the Evander Holyfield Lennox Lewis fight, as you look at Holyfield warming up in his dressing room, is the question of whether Evander can get inside of Lewis's jab to do damage against a taller fighter in Riddick Bowe. Evander Holyfield had no difficulty getting inside and wreaking havoc on Bo in two of their three fights. But March 13 in New York, it appeared that Lewis was able to keep Holyfield occupied at the end of his jab. What must Evander do? Well, Evander was able to go down to the body early and pick a fight with Riddick Bo to make him lean forward with his head, bring the fight to him. And that's what you want to do is make the fight come to you if you're Evander Holyfield. Can he do don't it against go, Lewis? Don't go out there and trying to get close to him. Make him come to you and you get close. He can do it. He can do it. He's got the skill and the experience, and he's been in with enough, enough giants in his career. Maybe he can take five or six years off his age. All right, Jim Lampley, so a very methodical, precise, and efficient performance by Fabrice Tiozzo in dispatching of Ken Murphy as he improves his record now. Fabrice Tiozzo, that is, to 41 and 1. Coming up next, it'll be our main event, the rematch between Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis says that he will not need the judges this time. He will exact justice on his own by way of his power punches. As you take a look at Evander Holyfield limbering up, loosening up, making certain that leg cramps will not be an issue in this one. As you heard him tell Nick Charles earlier, he feels good, he feels healthy. So indeed, he should be able to dip and do his job nicely to try to get inside, as he indicated he will have to do today in following his game plan. Well, folks, as our main event approaches, warm up your fingers to cast your round-by-round -round online scoring for a Holyfield versus Lewis by logging on to sports.excite.com. Now, following the main event, we'll provide the results and see how your scorecards compare to tonight's official judges. And keep in mind that while online, you can also obtain information about Holyfield versus Lewis as well as to watch the post-fight press conference. Back here now with Roy Jones Jr. And Roy, I'm reminded when we were talking about the first matchup between Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis, you were particularly concerned that Holyfield predicted a third round knockout. Why did that bother you? Well, that bothered me mainly because it's unlike Holyfield to make a big prediction like that. That puts a lot of pressure on him and on his performance. When you go out and predict that you're gonna do something to a guy in three rounds, people are looking for, for that happening. If that doesn't happen, it's like, what are you gonna do then? But the one interesting thing about it is that Lennox Lewis was also wondering, where well, is it gonna happen? So that arouses a lot of questions in my mind about Lennox's ability to believe in himself. You also talk very candidly because Holyfield had predicted the third round knockout. He didn't have a backup plan and Holyfield admitted as much as well. Is there a backup plan in place tonight? There has to be a backup plan tonight. The main difference in this fight should be the fact that there is a backup plan. That's what should make the fight different. Even if he doesn't win it, that should make this fight a lot different than the first one because he should have a backup plan. His plan in the first fight was just to knock the man out in round three. If that didn't happen, what happened? What after that? I mean, he said he was led by the Holy Spirit or whatever, but whatever led him, misled him because he should never predict a third round knockout. I think only God can make predictions. You can't predict nothing. You don't know what God has in store for you. And this time, he's going to sit back and wait to see what God has in store for him. And Holyfield did admit that it was his pride in reacting angrily to the fact that Lennox Lewis was calling him a hypocrite because he wasn't walking properly, if you will, or righteously. So, in fact, he got in the way of the Holy Spirit that time. Finally, I know Emmanuel Stewart would love to see Lennox Lewis be a lot more aggressive, be like a caged tiger because he possesses the power and ability to walk over Evander Holyfield. Do you think Lewis will display that tonight? I think he'll try to display that, but that's one thing that's going to be very touchy tonight. He has the power, the size, the ability to try to walk over Holyfield, but when a guy tries to walk over Holyfield, it's when Holyfield is most dangerous. And Lennox Lewis does have a suspect chair. Evander is one of the best punchers, pound for pound, to me, that ever been in the heavyweight division. Therefore, you have to be very suspect of his chin if he tries to do that. All right, I know you have a lot of passion and love for the fight game. You're still very much involved and extremely good, but you don't possess any more passion for the fight game than our guy Nick Charles. Let's check in with Nick. 
Okay, there's not a ripple of controversy so far for this one as everybody's spoken up and as Evander Holofield told us earlier, no cramps, no stomach ache, no lethargy. He's fit and ready to go. As for the cup that Lennox Lewis wore the first time, which the Holofield camp thought was up to his breast and took away any body shot target for Holofield. Mark Ratner, the executive director of the Nevada Athletic Commission, told me this one that Lewis is wearing tonight is, quote, a beautiful cup. It's conventional. It's actually the waistband is below the belt. So no problem there. As for Lewis's camp's concern, though, about Evander Holofield's headbutting in the past, Mitch Halper and the referee told me he is taking no preconceived notions into this ring with these two men. So they start, quote, with a clean slate. But right now, moments away from the opening bell, both men sitting in their locker room, I can tell you this, everybody has their game face on. Jim Thomas, Holofield's chief advisor, told me if President Clinton came to the door right now, he wouldn't get in. Back to you, JB. Well, Mick, that is awfully good to hear because keep in mind, folks, that the first time that Holyfield and Lewis met back on March 13th, it was indeed a much anticipated affair as the two respective champions were looking to unify the heavyweight titles for the first time in seven years. Fight fans were intrigued by the size, reach, and knockout power of the bigger, younger Lennox Lewis, while Holyfield, the classic warrior, built his reputation by defying the odds and, as I mentioned to Roy just a minute ago, guaranteeing a third-round knockout. Well, that fight did not live up to its hype or expectations and ended with one of the most controversial draw decisions ever. That's something both fighters promise will not be the case this time. March 13, 1999, the night Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis would unify the heavyweight championship for the first time in seven years. Not since Ali Frazier won had Madison Square Garden played host to a heavyweight title fight of this magnitude. Now we're ready for the bout. Can it live up to its buildup? Lewis, in the biggest fight of his often criticized career, started strong. And he wins his against the ropes as Lewis lands a right hand. Bigger man, George. Bigger punch. I felt that I was well in control of the fight. Like I said, I kept him at bay with the jab. I threw more punches than him. He had no answer for Lennox Lewis in this fight. Holyfield threw only 24 total punches in the first two rounds, but boldly stood by his prediction of a third round stoppage. This is where I need to go out, y'all. Get out of here. Holyfield landed a left hook inside and lands a right hand, and Lewis is stunned. Evander attacking, trying to fulfill the prophecy. I hit him with a good shot, but it didn't break him down enough. And it was almost like it's a victory for him to get past 30. He was happy, and I was kind of angry with myself. Using his six-inch reach advantage, Lewis regained control of the fight. Uppercut, uppercut, right hand. Holyfield stunned in the middle of the ring. The overwhelming belief among the Madison Square Garden crowd and the millions viewing worldwide was that Lewis had claimed the victory. But when the cards were tallied, the impossible became reality. The decision is even a draw. Lennox Lewis has just been robbed of the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Eight months since the controversial draw comes the rematch, and at stake once again, the undisputed heavyweight championship. Evander Holyfield thrives on rematches. In 1993, he avenged the loss to Riddick Bowe from the year before. For the second year in a row, they fought the fight of the year. And two years ago, Holyfield floored then-champion Michael Moore four times as payback for the 1994 meeting won by Moore. I want to win this fight because I'm learning from my mistakes and I'm willing to do what's necessary to be victorious in the fight. Lennox Lewis is looking for redemption. This rematch offers him a chance to earn the belts the judges denied him in their first fight. Lennox Lewis is going to be undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. I've been in the ring with him already, so I know what, what it takes to beat him. I know what I need to work on to beat him, and that's what I'm going to do. Both fighters have had plenty of time to contemplate March 13th and why tonight will bring a different result. Evander Holyfield has no answer for me. Uh, he, he had no answer for me in the first fight. He doesn't know what to do against a boxer like me. That man don't realize that he had the golden opportunity to be the heavyweight champ of the world. But because he didn't give his own, he gets a draw. Now he's complaining about, they should have gave me 
We're not in the business where they give you anything. It's where you take. With the undisputed heavyweight championship on the line, can Evander Holyfield yet again rise to the occasion when it matters the most? Or will Lennox Lewis, with his size and reach advantage, finally earn his due? The meeting between Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis last March was to bring resolution to the heavyweight division. As we all know by now, it only brought more confusion. Hopefully after tonight, one of the sport's worst decisions can be put to rest as champions Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis begin the 13th round in their home time. And he is here as well with Billy Crystal. I think Billy Crystal loves all kinds of sports. And of course, Sarah Jessica Parker. Andre Agassi is also here as well with Steffi Graf. And folks, we are here as well. Good evening once again, everyone. I'm James Brown along with the man considered to be the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer in the world. And thus far, the only undisputed champion in all of boxing, Roy Jones. And Roy, Roy we've talked so much about what we expect to see. Let's talk specifics now. Evander Holyfield had a difficult time getting inside of that jab of Lennox Lewis the last time. What can he do to be effective getting inside tonight? First thing he has to do, JB, is be more elusive, move side to side when he goes in. Don't go straight at Lennox. He has a good long jab. Go to the left or to the right of it with his head. That way he can get closer to Lennox. Punish his body and make Lennox lower himself to, to Evander's level, to Evander's eye level. Now, interestingly, with the reach advantage that Lennox Lewis possesses, interestingly, Lewis wants to get a little closer so he can press the action against Evander Holyfield. Again, is it in Lewis's heart and style to be aggressive? It's not in his style. And I don't think it's in his heart either. However, that's why I think Evander has a slight chance in this fight, although he didn't do too well in the first fight. When Lennox aggresses, when his aggressive style that, that, that he wants to apply tonight starts to come in effect, it's going to make Holyfield want to say, OK, now I can land this big punch. That's going to make a sparkle go off of Evander's eyes. He's going to say, here's my chance to try if I ever have a chance. Here's that one time to pull off another big upset. And that's what he's going to be waiting for. Let me throw one more your way. Some have said because Evander Holyfield is coming off of two poor performances, Vaughn Bean and, of course, the last Lewis affair. Maybe he has, in fact, gotten old very fast. Is he too old or does he have another great fight in him? There is a possibility, but I doubt it. The thing about Evander is, against Von Bean and the first Lennox Lewis fight, Evander had nothing to prove. That's not when we see Evander at his best. We see Evander at his best when he has a point to prove. Evander Holyfield, Evander Holyfield really pulled two. Mike Tyson one and two. So anytime he has a point to prove, Evander shows up. If there's ever a time for him to show up, and this may be the time that he does it, you never know because he is 37 years old, but if there's a time for Evander to show up, it will be tonight. All right, and there is a point to prove tonight. And with more on that, let's take you back downstairs once again to our anchor, Jim Lampley. All right, thank you, James Brown. We're almost ready to go. George Foreman, earlier this evening, we spoke about Lennox's Lewis's challenge here, and you said Lewis just has to be himself and do what he did on March 13th. So what can Evander do to make it different? Evander's got to let the fight come to him. Then get whatever Lennox Lewis extend out there. Don't go reaching for something. Let it come to him. Then when he comes to him, just sink down low and whip that body, and the head punches will come along. He can do it. He can do it. Yes, he's done it before against other champions equally as good as Lewis. Larry Merchant? Uh, you heard James Brown mention the federal indictments against one of the three so-called governing bodies whose belts are at stake here tonight. Uh, the difficulties involved in the disappointing fights March 13, disappointment of Trinidad, De La Hoya, another Mike Tyson debacle, various other elements of bad publicity. So is the sport's reputation once again at stake? Is it true that boxing needs a big performance from Evander and Lennox tonight? For the occasional fan who is attracted to these kinds of mega events, yes, a thousand times yes. 
But for the true believers, even if we take another one on the chin and need smelling salts, we're not going to retire. Because one of the things we've discovered about boxing fans during all of these troubles is that they're really as resilient and as tough as Evander Holyfield. They've been battered by scandals, they've been decked by disappointments, but they keep get, getting up, keep coming back for more. Because even though there's nothing worse than boxing when it's bad, there's nothing better when it's good. Let's hope it's good tonight. All right, well said. So now, with the highest of hopes, but with only the most realistic of expectations, let's try this one more time. For the so-called undisputed heavyweight championship of the world, Lennox Lewis against Evander Holyfield, here's the tale of the tape. And if you've been with us for the past eight months, indeed, if you're one of those who waited years for this to happen, you've memorized a lot of these numbers. Three-year age advantage for Lewis. Two and a half inches in height, it looks like more when they get into the ring. 217 and 242, as opposed to 215 and 246 back on March 13 again. Most people believe 242 is a very good sign for Lennox Lewis. And the reach advantage, six and a half inches. Punch that numbers, Larry. From the first fight, and these numbers tell it all, Lewis landing almost three times as many punches as Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield's trainers say he has to throw twice as many punches in this fight as he did in that fight. Can he sustain that sort of a pace? Same story with the, with the jabs, although Holyfield has told some friends he intends to try to out-jab the jabber in this fight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Lennox Lewis Van the Holofield fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold Letterman. And of course, diplomatic negotiations have surrounded all the procedural elements of this fight just as they did prior to their meeting on March 13. Lennox Lewis agreed to enter the ring first and be introduced first. And now Lewis will begin his walk-in, preceded by his brother and chess partner Dennis. Former fighter Harold Knight, a key Lewis lieutenant. There's Lennox. You have to move forward. We haven't mentioned the rematches of Lennox Lewis because he had only lost one fight and he won the rematch. Unmemorable because the rematch was the bizarre affair in which Oliver McCall wept in the ring, walked around instead of trying to throw punches at Lewis and ultimately saw referee Mills Lane bring the sad affair to a close. Never received much recognition for his accomplishments in the U.S. Won a silver and a gold medal in Olympics. Lost one fight in 10 years as a professional. But a crowd displeasing style has worked against him in public recognition. If you look carefully at Lennox Lewis and you conclude that his face shows you nothing, then you are in good and populous company. He labors to project an image of unshakable calm and usually succeeds. There are some 6,500 British fans here. I find that extraordinary, amazing. 6,500 people flew over 5,000 miles to see this man fight and try to win all the heavyweight titles for the first time in this century for a Brit. And this despite the fact that through much of his career he was at best the second most beloved heavyweight in Great Britain, overshadowed by the far less competent Frank Bruno. But there is the record for Lewis, 34 wins, the draw in New York, the one loss to Oliver McCall, later avenged 
twice he has won heavyweight titles. Looking at one of the greatest fighters this country has ever produced. Great, great warrior. I doubt there's been another heavyweight who has been in as many hard, tough, killer fights, absorbed as much punishment, and kept coming back for more. And the music with which Evander enters the ring is recorded under the label of his own record company, Real Deal Records. Smile creases the face of Holyfield. Nothing yet quite like the rapture with which we've seen him enter the ring for some of his big occasions. The question, of course, reverts to an old saying in boxing that a great fighter, great champion, always has one more great fight in him, as a Vander Holyfield already had that and other one more great fights. Evander Holyfield's extraordinary boxing record, 36 wins, three losses, one draw, 25 KOs, two of the losses to Riddick Bowe, one to Michael Moorer, and of course the draw last March 13. Now let's go to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. to step it up one more level. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the Thomas and Max Center in Las Vegas, Nevada for the feature bout of the evening as we join together to witness the last mega fight of the 20th century and it's all brought to you by Don King Productions in association with Panics of the U.S. Main events, Caesars Palace, the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, TVKO, and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Jimmy Benz, the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Edmund Lipinski, the International Boxing Federation President Robert Lee Sr., Supervisor Walter Stone, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners Amy Ayub, Glenn Carano, Lorenzo Fertitta, Dr. Luther Mack with the Executive Director Mark Rettner. Introducing to you our physicians at ringside, we have doctors Flip Omansky, Margaret Goodman, Al Cabana, and James Game. Introducing our timekeepers and also keeping count of the knockdowns, we have Al Bicek and Jane Broadfoot. Introducing to you our judges, all three from Las Vegas, Nevada, Chuck Jumpa, Bill Graham, and Jerry Roth. Introducing the third man of the ring, working in this, his 60th world title bout, Mitch Halpern. All right, fans, here we go with the rematch we've all been waiting for. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Las Vegas, it's time for the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing to you first the title holder on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing purple trunks with white and red trim, representing his hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. He weighed in at 217 pounds, and with a record of 36 wins, three losses, and one draw, he has 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former undisputed cruiserweight world champion, the former undisputed heavyweight world champion, and the current WBA and IBF heavyweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome boxing's proud warrior, introducing Evander, the real deal holy field. And his 
his opponent across the ring, the other title holder on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red trim, the big man from London, England. He weighed in at 242 pounds, the 1988 Olympic gold medalist has a professional record of 34 wins, one loss, one draw with 27 big knockouts to his credit. Tonight, attempting to become the first British heavyweight in 100 years to capture the undisputed title, here is the hard-hitting and current WBC heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Lennox Lewis. Once again, Mitch Halpern is our referee in charge. Gentlemen, this will be clean. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Touch clubs. Good luck. Let's go. Touch clubs. Are we about to see the sad death of a great king or yet another of his resurrections? It was a late arriving crowd, but the rafters are now oh. packed. 19,000 plus in the Thomas and Mack Center. An audience around the world hoping and praying as they did back in March for a conclusive definition of the identity of the heavyweight champ. And as they clear Lewis's corner and the British fans begin all chant soccer style, it seems to be a crowd almost evenly distributed in its passion. Just about half for Lewis and half for Holyfield. We should have drama tonight. Already you can see Holyfield trying to get closer to Lewis right from the get-go. Now he's beat him to the jab. Holyfield said he would try to establish the left jab. He did. And Lewis fires a rare left hook. Lewis beginning already to paw a little bit with the jab, trying to establish the range between himself and Holyfield. Now, if Evander want to really land that left jab, he's got to make contact with it, with uh, Lewis's left foot, and then as soon as he makes contact, jab in. If he's not made contact, don't try it. Where is the ideal range for Evander George? Is it right up in Lennox's chest? Or is it a medium zone? You got to be a medium. You right there, touch his foot, and don't go any closer because you don't want him backing away. Just stay that distance. Lennox got to make sure he keeps him on the outside. Evander is bobbing, but he's not weaving. He's going to one side, and he stays there. Holyfield misses with a left hook. Lewis counters over the top with the right hand. Evander trying to project more sheer energy than was the case in New York. And whacking away at Lewis on the inside. Something he didn't get many chances to do in Madison Square Garden. Now for Evander, all of these close range contacts he's making is better for him. You don't want to keep this fight at long reach. Evander pounds to the body as Lewis is backed up into a corner already. Alperin has had to work a lot harder in round one here than he did in 12 rounds of Trinidad De La Hoya. Break, 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 break. Certainly Easy, Holyfield break. is working harder in this first round than he did in the last one. You know, he was able to get in one good left jab, and that gives him confidence. You can't start reaching at this point. You've got to let the fight come to you if you Evander Holyfield. And Holyfield reached with the right hand, and Lewis touched him up inside with a little right uppercut as the result, but already... Don Turner is yelling at Evander from his corner. He doesn't want to fight. Yelling at Evander to try to let him know that he thinks Lewis is timid and that Evander can take command. Evander did something very smart. He jabbed Lennox Lewis right in the chest. Right in the chest. And a double jab there by Holyfield. Off the round one results. You get the impression it's a better Holyfield already than was the case in New York. Lennox Lewis has got to keep his reluctancy that he had in the original bout. He wasn't overconfident. He just used his jab. Oh, let the right hand flow. Hand Lewis trying to drop the right hand in on top of the left jab. Go home. Go home. Break. Step back easy. Holyfield easy. partially blocking it with the left glove. The more minutes that Evander Holyfield stay close to Lennox Lewis, the better. Every 
time you're jabbing, two jabs, and throw that overhand right on him. He's leaning back. Don't go straight in. Always on that. Give him a little faint first. Go to the water. Because he's wide open on the knee shots. Instead of trying to chop over top, touch him and start trying to rip him underneath of you, and you're tying him up perfectly. Okay. Okay. Then get that jab going. Get the jab. His head is coming. Well, everybody, the whole crowd is into his head about tonight. So. You got the whole crowd. Yeah, you got the mouthpiece? Mouthpiece. I got mouthpiece. Get that jab going. Get the jab going. Let him control it. Control it with the jab. Holyfield with the Compu Box edge in jabs in the first round, landing eight to Lewis's three. Lennox wasn't really snapping the jab as he did early in the fight in New York. Now he sticks it out there with a little bit more authority to start, start round number two. But Holyfield comes back, and you see Holyfield listening to Don Turner's instruction. Roll the jab twice when you throw it. Double up. Well, he won't even throw the jab twice because if he misses, Lewis is not able to hit him with a jab. So you throw two to make the big man back up. If you miss him, you at least back up. Hard punch by Lewis punch, step inside. Punch, step punch, 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 Let go. Keep it clean. The question is whether Holyfield trying to come in is, is on a suicide mission or is he going to get to Lewis? Evander's reaching out, pawing already. That's what he shouldn't be doing. He should be throwing uppercuts to Lennox Lewis' elbow, uppercuts to his chest. And Lewis, who said he would be conscious of... Lewis, who said he would be go conscious watch, of watch, trying watch, to be aggressive go, and take advantage of knockout opportunities, is trying to load the right hand. Probably not a good idea for him. Well, he's, like Larry said earlier, he threw a lot of good right hands in the first fight, but they were nothing that hit him square right, hit Evander square in the middle of the face. Always on the whoa, side whoa, of the whoa, head. Step back, step back, step back. Step back. This fight, Lewis got to concentrate on going right down the middle with that right hand. Uppercut by Lewis as Evander jumps in with the jab. Lewis double jab. That's what you don't want at this part of the fight, is allowing Lewis to get confident with his left jab. You if you're Holyfield, you mean. Yeah, if you're Holyfield, you don't want him to get confidence with that left jab. He's dropping his left hand, make him do it lower by hitting him in the body a time or two. Turner asked Holyfield to throw the overhand right. Evander hasn't released it. Lewis has released his right hand aggressively three times in this round. Evander throws the overhand right. He has to make contact with the left hand first. Left hook to the body, one of Holyfield's better weapons over the years. Well, you know, Holyfield's brain trust wanted him to have twice the activity of the first fight. He hasn't shown that kind of energy yet. Now the Everlast gloves are not bad when Holyfield puts his hand behind his ear. He, he still have a little extra padding. The Everlast glad, glove suits him better. You're not gonna see a good clean knockout with them, but they really act as good padding for blocking shots. In his great rematch performances in the past, Evander Holyfield was able to throw a lot of punches in situations where he could attack. Now Lewis got Holyfield, uh, Holyfield's got Lewis dropping his hand, looking. Now, Holyfield has the advantage. He can throw his jab now. But his punch count is dropping off again, George. He's just not releasing his hands and throwing as much as he needs to to be the aggressor. Yeah, he's dropping his hand. That means you can beat him to the punch because the big guy has to bring him up and throw. That round looked much like the rounds in the first fight. Give me some Vaseline. Straight. <laughs> Don't get flat with it. Uh -huh. Need more? No. Give me some water. Holyfield throwing many more punches than in the first two rounds, no but still fewer than two 30 punches right per round. Not enough. The shoulder takes his right hand away. He's trying to hit you with a right uppercut coming out. Inside, watch Lewis come up with a nice uppercut. Later on, good body shots by Holyfield. But overall CompuBox numbers in round two, Holyfield six out of 24, Lewis 13 out of 47, including nine of 30 jabs. Those numbers, as you said, Larry, very much like what we saw throughout the fight in New York. I could be mistaken about this, but Holyfield in his corner looks weary somehow. I don't see any energy. His body language is not lively. That could change, you know, in five seconds. 
but that's the impression one gets from him. And now, just as was the case in New York, Lennox Lewis able to stick the jab in Holyfield's face repeatedly and start to set up power shots. Uppercut landed again. As said, Evander's advantage if Lewis continues to throw these uppercuts because he drops his knees. He bends his knees to throw his uppercut. But he's got to get off, George. He's just not getting off. As soon as he bends, Holyfield's got to jump in with a left hook. Let me tell you, he can buy something tonight. Doesn't matter if you hit him or not, just jump in with a, right, a left hook. Lewis backs into a corner on his own and then ties Holyfield up momentarily. Halpern separates them. Lewis walks out of the corner. Lewis lands a little left hook. And combinations. Now this is unusual for Lewis to be the better combination puncher. Now there's a triple jab from Holyfield and he sticks with it. That's one thing you said before the fight, George. If he gets into punching range, he's got to stay there and try to do some work. And don't let this loudest guy to get the distance again. Right hand lands on a counter for Lewis. One of the things that Holyfield observed after the first fight was that Lewis was punching, as he put it, at the target instead of through the target, meaning he wasn't loading up for big punches, and that doesn't give him time to reply as he would like. Well, that's part of Lewis's basic cautiousness. Now, Holyfield was able to get in some good body shots here and there. This fight goes into the seventh round. That can change things, too. He was able to jab Lennox Lewis in the chest. He didn't do that last time. So you're suggesting that you like a lot of what Evander's doing so I like far. a lot of what he's doing. He's invested in the body, even jab to the chest. I don't like him standing there getting those jabs, but he... When he's not in range, get all the way out of the range, which, which he should be doing. When you fought Holyfield, did you feel like he had effective head movement against your jab, George? Yeah, it's a long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Much has changed in the eight years since April 9, 1991. And that's why I named all my boys George, so I wouldn't have to remember him. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Cleanest punch of the bout so far. Lewis is getting in the kind of fight that Holyfield can benefit by. Standing close, trying to hit him back for hitting you. Don't do that if you're Lewis. Lewis is bending down. And Holyfield landed the left hook. Bending down. Round three had some moments for Evander. If you have to just keep him back on your jab, you get lazy, don't let him get too close. Keep him back at the zone where you want to just relax. But you've got to catch it with some shots up underneath here. Everything you're shooting is over top. Okay? You've got to get some shots up underneath. Get him back on the jab and keep him back there, but come with something underneath too, okay? You gotta get some get some respect. You gotta take it to him a little bit. Okay? In the middle of the round. Holyfield lands a long right hand, no power on it because Lewis was backing up. But later on in the round, hey, he did out. land a cleaner punch. Raising punch there. So there was some excitement in the third for Holyfield fans, but still, overall CompuBox numbers, Lewis threw more and landed more. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> I don't know, Jim. Evander Holyfield, I thought, did enough to win the third round. He got inside. He wrapped him a couple of times real good. Two to one, 29-28, Lennox Lewis. Lennox looked real good with the jab. He was busy in the first two. Evander, the good shots in round three. So I gave a run of the third round. Two rounds to one, Lewis. Don Turner asked his fighter to go inside in this round. That's Evander Holyfield. So Turner apparently liked some of what he saw in round number three. Another big right hand for Holyfield as Lewis misses with the left. And Lewis, you want to keep this fight at a distance. You don't want to get it close. Uh, Lewis's corner told him to step up and take the fight to him. I wouldn't do that at this point. Keep this thing at range as long as you can. 
Oh, it's a man sport, George. Let them go in and bust each other a little bit. Yeah, but the bigger guy, he looks bigger, but he's not all that big inside. He's, he's a tall guy. When you see a good jab like that, that means that he doesn't like mixing it up. Now, you, you pointed out that Lennox was bending forward in the last round. Why would he do that? It was the first round that Holyfield made contact of equal range with him in height. Lewis started to bend down looking for that uppercut. I guess you go into training and you start thinking, I could, I could have knocked him out if I had done this. But forget about that. Go back to what you did. When Riddick Bow, a taller man, leaned forward and agreed to exchange with Holyfield, Holyfield got chances to look good. In New York, Lennox Lewis simply wouldn't do that. Now, everything that every time that Evander gets close, he has to dive in. That's why they clinch. He's jumping in because of the distance. He can't get it. And Lewis goes back to popping the jab in Holyfield's face. And he can do that for about two or three rounds. You need not try to mix it up. Lewis holding his left hand below his waist, inviting Holyfield to jab. Holyfield leaving the opportunity alone for the moment. Right hand over the top by Lewis. And Holyfield pounds to the ribcage as Lewis holds his arm. Now, I haven't seen Evander do anything in this round, and we're two minutes and 15 seconds into it. Lewis hasn't done a whole lot. He sits there and waits for one punch at a well, time. Well, he's landed maybe 15 or 17 jabs. Jabs score. Evander lands a right. Lewis lands a little right in return. Lewis gets lazy, and then Evander Holyfield gets closer. And Evander again jabbing to the body, something he did not try to do in the first fight. Oh, I'm telling you, and it's paying off great dividends. Ooh, that right hand on the side of the head hurt. Kind of slid past Evander's ear, though. Yep. Four rounds in the books. A couple of them, tough rounds to score. I know it's not, but this idea, he knew something big at the end of the round and excites the crowd. He's trying to steal okay, it. He's trying to steal around it. But what you got to do, you got to take some aggressive stuff at him with some big shots without going over the top. Yeah. You keep telling you, come in underneath on the shot first. Even a simple jab, jab, left uppercut, right hand would work. But come from underneath, you're doing everything over top. If you would really focus on your right hand and sit down and shoot the right hand straight, you can catch him with right hands. But you're trying to shoot your right hands too high. Slow down, get the right hand down here, shoot it short and tend it straight and you tighten up, okay? Should you get around that, let go with the right hand. Stay in your rhythm now. Close your eyes and listen. Stay close. When you get in close. Don't go flat quitting now. Good. Mouthpiece, don't go flat quitting. Double jab, double jab, double jab. Once again in round four, Vander Holyfield only threw 30 punches. Lewis, 49. But halfway through the between round period, you saw the graphic that indicated Lewis has landed half as many jabs in the first four rounds here as he did in New York. So Holyfield, though not doing much more statistically than in New York, is much more in the fight here early on. You know what? He good left hook. Solid left hook by Holyfield. And Holyfield grinning as Lewis now lands a big right hand. Both fighters have landed a big power shot in this round. And Halpern telling Holyfield to watch his head as Lewis goes under and then over with the right hand and almost throws Holyfield over the top rope. Stops now. This isn't a wrestling match. It's a boxing match. Just keep this clean. You understand me? Understand and there's me? a cut Go in this corner. Big along cut. the right this side of Lewis's of eye. Lewis's He's not even aware of it. Eye. It, it's, it doesn't look it dangerous, it, but Nothing. you never it's know. Abrasion. More an abrasion than a cut, according to Flip Omansky, the doctor. Lewis wasn't aware of it. The blood does start the trickle outside his right eye as he goes back to the uppercut and busts Holyfield again. Lewis thinks he's got Holyfield going with these right hands. Hey, hey, get back easy, hey, come on, let's go. British fans chanting Lewis. for the man. Lewis better get his hands up. Holyfield is doing a good job. Whenever he's close, he throws something. When the fight is away, he doesn't do anything. When you're close, throw shots. Lewis hasn't had his hands up for eight years, George. 
He loves to fight this way, as do so many modern fighters. And he's doing something he didn't do before. He's leaning forward a little bit, trying to get that uppercut. Absolutely. He thinks he's got Holyfield going with his big right hand connects. Holyfield, is, out. Holyfield is landing good left hooks. Absolutely. Two in this round. And the blood is flowing from Lewis's right eye. Outside the eye, as you can see, outside the orbital bone. Holyfield trying to make it a brawl, that would be to his advantage. That's right. You want to keep it a brawl and make that big man keep... And the good thing about this, I didn't mention, Lewis has his cup a little lower. That's why Evander is able to go down and jab and hit him in the body a little better this time. Good point, George. Big yeah. difference in the position of the protective cup. Lennox going out, to work with the uppercut again. Right Every time he does, he brings his head into buttable range for Holyfield. Not only that, he gets himself in the range of getting hit himself. Well, despite the blood, so far it's been a big round for Lewis. Holyfield has got Lewis coming forward. That's what you want him to do. That's the only way you can bob and weave. You can't go forward bobbing and weaving. But again, Evander goes 20, 30 seconds without throwing a punch, George. He's now, got to be more active. Lewis goes to the body a little bit. And Lewis looking to the body. And then going up. All you gotta do is get a little bit closer. A little bit closer. And that right hand is shooting just the way you're shooting it. Not that high, shoot it straight inside. Catch it with that short right hand, okay? Your right hand is the key right now behind your left hand. The uppercut is good because it's getting his attention, but keep shooting the right hand. You shoot them right, but shoot them low. Don't shoot them high. Just what you're doing, banging out his hips, setting, shut him in there. Shoot them real straight, real short. Cut is nothing. It's a good, good round for you. Lennox Lewis's cut, man. Al Gavin out of New York is as good as anybody in the sport. Larry? Leaping left. Right in here is where Holyfield and Lewis clashed heads. Lewis came out with a trickle of blood. Round six of a scheduled 12. Now that cut isn't so bad, but it sure does chink the, the, the what you call it, the shield of confidence well, it gives of a Lewis big, something to think about, yeah. right? And you don't want you don't want to be doing that when you go back to the corner. You want to think about how I'm going to get him the next round, not how blood is flowing. Holyfield has got his jab going better this time. Holyfield averaging exactly 30 punches per round through the first five. That's the same level of inactivity that hurt him in New York. Good left jabs by Evander Holyfield. He is making his punches count more tonight. Going no to question. the body. Going to the chest again. And knocking Lewis off balance and knocking him Going back. Going to the chest again. You cannot be allowed to be hit in the chest as a heavyweight. Keep your head still. Keep your head right, still. George. It's just Keep like someone taking a, uh, sticking a syringe and just sucking all of your energy from you. And so many young fighters don't even understand that, so they allow guys to do it. And now Holyfield goes upstairs with the jab. Evander's off to a positive start in round six, commanding the first minute of the round with the jab. And Lewis has dropped into a stretch of inactivity himself. Looking for a knockout. He trained for a knockout. Now he doesn't have no idea how to get back and get this thing in control. Right hand by Lewis. Holyfield getting the guard up. Oh, my goodness. Why did Lewis do that? Frustrated. And the Boo Birds come out in the crowd. They want to see more activity. Lewis thought all he would have to do is come out here, and it was all his for the taking. He had no idea he would have to fight for this title. That's what it's gotten to be. It's gotten so to be. So you think Lennox Lewis was that totally complacent coming into this fight? Oh, no. He's, everybody told him, you won this fight. You should have knocked him out. And he forgot about it. He won it by good tactics. He had a good strategy going. Well, so many times in Evander Holyfield's career, it's been easy to be misled into believing that it was over. Those jabs to the chest, one after another. And I'm telling you, a knockout could follow those kind of punches. 
All he has to do, Evander, now is get in one left hook to the chin. This could be over. Lewis headhunting in this round, concentrating on long right hands to Holyfield's head. Evander working to Lewis's body and stepping up the activity level in this round. I don't Lewis think that, is waiting and he's complaining. I don't think that Holyfield's offense is bothering Lewis. It's the fact that he's harder to hit than he was in the first fight. Oh, his offense is bothering him greatly. He's hitting him in the body, in the chest, things he didn't do last time. Break, 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 go! Beautiful work. Get in close. Keep your arms close. Close. That's why he got to reach around you to hold you. And when he reach around you, let go with a combination. And roll out. Then you hit him with the left hook. Holding on to too much shit. Let it go. And I keep shooting the damn right hand straight. The short right hands. I don't care if they miss. Keep shooting them. Even if they go over the top of his head, it's wearing him down to tie him because you're so big. But you just cut off completely. It's the same way you lost some other one and get your ass in trouble on the damn scorecard because you're not fighting. It's not that he's doing nothing. He's doing better than you. You're waiting too damn much. All right. Let the shots go. Right now. And back with the jab, too. Back up. Crazy moving and bump right or left and throw your foot. Stay off the ropes. Right now, Lewis says, let's see if it's right now. Round seven of a schedule 12. Lewis played around and waited around too long and he turned this thing into a fight. He didn't need to be in the fight. And that was what Lennox Lewis was talking about, I guess, when he said right now, uppercut lands with thunder. Quickly, Harold Letterman, how you got a three six? Four rounds to two, 58, 56, Lennox Lewis. I gave him the whole field a six round because he was busier. There's no question, Lennox didn't punch, but he's punching this round. Now Lennox fires the uppercut and throws Holyfield off and lands the uppercut again. He's just waiting on that uppercut now. Buster Douglas got himself knocked out against Evander Holyfield trying to land an uppercut from distance. All oh, Evander is standing there in the pocket head, weathering head, the storm head, and anything that he can get in after the storm, he takes it. Lewis should be jabbing and jabbing and making the fight. They both land uppercuts there. Holyfield with the right hand and Lewis with his own right hand. Well, Big left hand. hook by Holyfield. They're They're head to head now. Head to Lewis head. Lewis is hurt. Now Lewis smiles as Holyfield comes in. Holyfield thinks he's got a target. It was a left hook inside that hurt Lewis. It was a big one. That left hook partially blocked by Lewis's right hand. Lennox leans against the ropes himself. Holyfield working the body. Lewis has decided that the uppercut is his bread and butter. Keeps coming back to it. Lewis has no idea the effect of those, those jabs to the body and to the chest. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. It's taken on him. He has no idea. Evander Holyfield with a better plan tonight. A little bit more energy. Not that big a difference, but enough to make it much more of a fight. And that's that what body shot hurt. That body shot hurt. Evander Holyfield land a good body shot, and it hurt Lewis. Hard left hook by Holyfield. Lewis stunned again. Lewis stands in. Holyfield fires back with the left hook. Holyfield, the quicker fighter, through the last minute and a half of round seven. Lewis almost casual with the uppercut. Big target there for Holyfield. Well, uh, Emmanuel Stewart told him to go out and get at Holyfield, and this is the result. But here comes Lewis now. Lewis rallying again. Combination. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Lewis to the body. His own right hand lands flush. They trade shots at close range. Round seven, the best round these two fighters have fought against each other in two fights. Heavyweight excitement. How you feeling? Huh? Yeah, you gotta take your round. Yeah. You gotta pick it up. Keep it taking the turn now, okay? Keep taking the turn. You don't want to angle. 
I got hold, it. Hold, 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 hold. Who the referee about his head? He's not going to say nothing about his head. You got to get that. those punches and work on him inside. Early in the round, that left hook apparently discombobulated Lewis for a few seconds. He's holding on here. Later in the round, once again, Lewis coming back in the last 20 seconds of the round. And you heard Emmanuel Stewart still thinks that the best fight for Lewis is to engage Holyfield right in the middle of the ring. Ampiabox numbers in round seven, virtually even. Lewis 20 of 39, Holyfield 21 out of 45. Letterman, as you saw, gave the round to Holyfield, probably because of the big left hook shots. Right hand lands for Lewis. Holyfield much more engaged, looking much more confident than at any point in New York. Lewis obviously much more conscious of wanting to knock his man out tonight, and therefore creating opportunities for Evander. Lewis is looking strictly for a knockout. Evander Holyfield now, all he has to do is play off of that counter punch. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, step back, James. Pull it on home. Let's go. Every landed punch but one in round seven was a power shot. There's that left jab to the body by Holyfield again. <laughs> left hook upstairs now. Another left hook, and Lewis backs up and ducks. Fires a right hand back and goes to the body. Finally, Lewis begins to exercise the wisdom in trying to get the Holyfield's body and take some of the sap out of those punches. Lewis is totally leaning forward now. He is into trouble. If only Holyfield could just musk up a little energy to throw a couple hooks. This is the Lennox Lewis who fought Ray Mercer in Madison Square Garden. Tactically wrong, engaging in warfare, and trying to rise to the occasion against a fighter who likes to fight this way. He has made up his mind, Lewis has, that he's going to fight. Lewis getting smarter and going to the body. He's got to land some punches to the body. Where's the jab with which Lewis dominated the first fight? George did. Evander take it away with those jabs to the chest? Yes, he did. Suddenly did. Suck the juice all out of that left jab. Now he's got a fighter the same size as him. And, and it looks from time to time that Lewis is a tired fighter. When he went 10 rounds fighting this style against Mercer in Madison Square Garden, he was totally exhausted at the end. Yep, and it was because of those body punches. And the bringing of that cup. That protective cup has been lowered. Holyfield got a green light to get down low. So it's a much more even fight. But despite everything we're saying, Lewis has landed some shots in this round and may in fact be winning the round. He's got his hands low. Holyfield couldn't miss if he just jumped in a Floyd Patterson left hook. Which he did right there. Oh, jump in. Their heads come together again and Lewis produces some good infighting as he drives Evander back to the ropes. Evander trying to flurry at the end of the round. Lewis blunted him there. I don't know if they're getting it right this time, but they're certainly getting it right turn. On your feet. Come on. Breathe deep. Come on. Tim, you got him. You got him. You got him. Pull him off. Put it on his head. Put it on his head. He's just weak. He's falling all over the place, but you're not pushing. Plenty of stiff jab. You got to take it down a stretch. That we can't fuck around with no more of these rounds, man. The fight is close. The fight is definitely close. Okay, you got to take it to him. Push the jab. Push the jab hard. As like you said, push off on the right foot. Make sure you move his whole body with the jab. And then when you shoot that right hand, shoot it short. You can hit him with the right hand, but shoot it short. Just the thought. When you're outside, make sure you far enough where it can't hit you. When you move inside, move in quick. Move in quick. Lennox Lewis asked by Emmanuel Stewart to resurrect his jab. Stewart, as a trainer, has never lost a heavyweight title fight. Lennox Lewis has never knocked an opponent out past the eighth round. Holyfield has, and he goes for one here. Holyfield was able to get in a double jab here, double jab there, make the guy wait for it, and then come over top with a right hand. That's 
he was able to do it great. That's the old boxing style. I like what Lewis is doing to Holyfield's body. He's equalizing the momentum somewhat with that body attack. Stewart asking Lewis to try to set up a right hand with the jab. Lewis just seems to need too much room to get his jab going. Let go, break, break, step back. You should jab. Don't wait to get in distance. Lennox goes back to the uppercut. Evander wax to the body again. Holyfield's eyes are clear. Not so with Lewis. Holyfield looks like the fresher fighter. Lennox is still throwing more punches. Lewis better keep his head up. When Lewis was exhausted and in trouble against Mercer in Madison Square Garden, in a very Ooh, similar what a fight. Good left hook to the body by Evander Holyfield. The Englishman showed courage and heart. Good jab, the good jab. In the fight. Holyfield stepping it up again it with that double time. pumping oh, jab oh, inside. Oh, <laughs> Lewis jabs is a different fight, but when he stands there and wait for a big punch, oh, Evander oh, takes oh, over. Left hook to the body by Lewis. You don't see that very often. He's going to have to do a lot of that. It's not usually a weapon in his arsenal. Let go, let go, let go. Sit back. I'm in here. I'm in here. You got to admit that Evander's been in with a lot of giants, and he's never backed down from a one. Well, Evander Holyfield won't back down from anybody. Uppercut lands for Lewis. Holyfield misses the left hook. Lewis lands the uppercut again. Holyfield might be hurt right here. He Lewis, but will Lewis take advantage of it? Multiple punches for Lewis. Holyfield not throwing back. Fires the right and drives Lewis into the ropes. Lennox goes back to the body and the uppercut. Thrashing Holyfield with power shots. Now Holyfield's going to try to flurry again to convince the judges he's won the round. It's a smart professional thing to do. Holyfield is an excellent boxer. Knows what to do and when to do it. Lewis got in a last shot, so Holyfield decided to fire a left hook after the bell. Cooling down, cooling down, cooling down. Here you go. Can't rub his low back, rub his back with eyes and eyes. You can't pull straight back. It's a jab this round here now. You said, that was yours. You won it, but that uppercut over here is what pulled it out, really. But you should have jab this round. He's tired, make him jab. Now let's see if we can catch that uppercut that hurt Holyfield right there. Lewis, big uppercut. Lewis trying to follow up. If he'd had a left hook to follow with. I have a question for you, George. When, when Lewis goes in and battles him, you say he should jab. When he doesn't battle him, you suggest he doesn't have the gumption or the courage to stand with him. Now, which is it? Because in the last few rounds, he stood right with Holyfield and Glenn. I mean, this is a common thing we hear about Lewis. The one thing about Evander, when he protects himself, he puts his hand, arm all the way behind his ear. So that's why he's able to get caught with uppercuts straight up the middle. He always put his behind his ear. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through nine? Yeah. Six, three, or five, four? No, six, three, 87, 84, Lennox Lewis. I gave him the whole field around six and seven. He is making it close, but I got to tell you something, Jim. Judges very often look at a fighter's physical appearance, especially in close rounds. Evander looks like he's fresh, and in certain rounds, right, Lennox looks back, like he's back, dying. Get, get and that's easy. what fools the judges. There's no question Lennox will land more punches and lose rounds because that buck is wide open. It's an interesting point, Harold, because I observed before that, that Holyfield looked weary on, in the corner between rounds, and he does. But when he gets out here, he doesn't look weary, and that's where it counts. Well, that's an exercise of will. 6-3 on Letterman's card. I'll bet you anything. 
there's at least one judge at ringside who has Holyfield ahead in the fight. But I can tell you this, Larry, Frank, Frank, Lewis Frank, should not engage into go, these exchanges. Go, go. It's no good. He doesn't need it. He has the reach. But Evander Holyfield, this benefits him. He should try to create as much of this as he can. But he just landed another big right uppercut. And then you say, George, that he doesn't have it inside when he no, does No, he that. doesn't have it inside. That's why he shouldn't do it. Straight right hand lands for Lewis. Evander not throwing right now. Lewis with two body shots. And Evander's left hook upstairs was blocked by Lewis, who looks tired, but still has the energy to fire the two body shots and block the left hand. That's the good thing about training. Whenever he, uh, Lewis moves to Evander's left, Evander can't get anything off. He just goes to his left, nothing. Left hook lands for Lewis. Oh boy, that was some good clean left hook. I don't think it did a lot of damage, but it just landed. You know, earlier we've talked about the four pounds Lewis took off for this fight from the last fight, which indicates that he had trained hard. Well, he's going to need he's going to need that kind of conditioning to get through these last six minutes. Six minutes. He's Coming moving up. to Evander's left, and, and that's where it will pay off. If, if indeed that was an indication of his best conditioning. Evander Holyfield didn't throw many punches in this 10th round. Six minutes to go. It'll be the 11th time in Holyfield's career that he's been into the two championship rounds. Lewis, far less. It'll be his third. Six, I mean. And we gonna win this two goddamn rounds. Yo, what a, get that damn jab to working, baby. You get your jab to working to try them little short straight right hand. But at least you shoot the right and the hook behind it. What you need to do in your best punch, whenever you make your little fade off, you let them miss the same thing you did and let do that the 11th round like you did the last time. You let them miss a lot, step it up, but push it through after that. Okay? Push the damn right hand through. 11 and 12, baby. You hear this. Right? You can't you get two rounds, man. Push, push, to get what means push, this much push, to you. Combination punches on the inside, man. You gotta have faith in God that you want this fight. Hundred percent for two rounds, and you can do it. A hundred percent. You're a workhorse. Let's go see it now. Don't don't take anything off. Three minutes of work. Three minutes of work. Let's go, buddy. CompuBox numbers in round ten. Lewis landed 23 out of 44 punches. Holyfield nine out of 34. Does Holyfield have six intense minutes? that his corner is asking him for. He's got bounce in his feet at this point. Yes. <laughs> He's... What a fighter this guy is. Straight he... left for Holyfield. I Lewis mean... landed a right hand earlier. I mean, He's 37 years old. What a man he is. 37 years old and without a real big punch. You know, there have been older fighters that have done well because they had a big punch. But to work at this, at the high energy level, he needs to, because he's a small heavyweight, he's just a remarkable guy. Holyfield busting Lewis to the body with the left hand and then trying to get upstairs. Holyfield showing much more energy here in the 11th than he showed in a seemingly weary round 10. Ooh, good body shots by Lewis. And a quick left hook inside by Lewis. Landed flush. Holyfield takes a punch so well. When Lewis goes out and jab and steps around, he has this fight won. Whenever he takes it, uh, his trainer's advice, getting in there, that's when things turn around. All right, break, step back. Watch your head, watch your head. Watch your, step back. Let's go. Hey, so break, step back. Let's go. Well, Lewis is just standing on the mound, pitching now. Break, 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 break. Here. And when Holyfield comes forward, Lewis leans forward and pops him with that uppercut. Well, he's on the mound like a pitcher, and he just stands there and does whatever he wants. Woo. Hard left hook by Holyfield. Break, break. <laughs> you heard Emmanuel Stewart a couple of rounds ago telling Lennox Lewis the fight is close. Don't mess around in there. He stands on his mound, and those body shots hurt. Right hand by Lewis. Holyfield misses his left. Watch your hands. Break, break, break. Watch your hands. Lewis has better try to put all everything to rest and win this round. Ooh. Combination by Lewis. Holyfield lands a big right hand in return. Break, break. Easy, easy. Let's go. Let's go. Step back. Let go, man. You can believe when Evander gets hit, he's going to hit you back. Closer than New York. 
Much closer in terms of energy and and the kind of effort the two fighters are putting forth. But still, Lewis throws more and lands more in almost every round. Will the judges see it that way? Blood on the bridge of Lewis's nose. The cut outside Lewis's eye from the butt early in the fight has never begun bleeding again. Four punches land for Lewis. Holyfield can't get one in. Lewis jabbing and bouncing now. His energy coming back. Yeah, Holyfield is cut. On yep, the left blood cheek. on the left cheek of Evander Holyfield. Might have come from one of those right uppercuts. One more round. That's not bad at all. One round to go. Hardly need to do anything with it. Come on, let's cool him off real good. Put your head on. The last round, Evander. Last so round. You don't have to worry about holding nothing back. Let it go, okay? You got to fight, What's I believe, but I'm not sure, but you got to win this last round, man. You know what it did last time just to get a draw. Got to win it. Okay, but you got to win. Stay small, and just, that's all you got to do. You don't let him off the hook when you get him in trouble. You Coming can do it. You're led by the spirit. Real deep this round. Hit them Let's get up. Come on, let's get up. Let's get up. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. We get ready for the 12th round. Three points. Lennox Lewis has never lost a decision. Evander Holyfield has never had a 12th round knockout. And if Lewis wins, he's the first unified British heavyweight champion since Bob Fitzsimmons in 1897. Hey, let go, let go, let go. Last round, last round. Come on. Harold Letterman with Lewis ahead by five. I'll bet you anything, all three official judges have it closer than that. Just a guess. This has been a close fight. I'm not saying I disagree with Harold's card. Just that I'm betting it's closer than that on Bender's the official card. has got some thunder on those punches, I'm telling you. Lewis just doesn't seem to respect Evander Holyfield's power. He hits him hard, he just drops his hand and walks right to it. What should the two fighters be doing in this round, George? Evander's got to pull it out. He just can't sit there and box this round. He's got to fight. If ever you're going to fight, this is the fight of your life fight. Lewis stuck the jab in Holyfield's mouth, then just missed with the right hand. Lewis Holyfield trying to put the pressure on. Uppercut lands for Evander. Lewis slightly staggered. Now he looks to land his right. Evander with a lot of energy here in the 12th. Lennox seeming to try to load one big shot. Now he goes back to the jab. Lewis throwing his punches sloppily here in the 12th round. Oh, 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 oh. Head, that was your head going up. You okay? Go. Minute and a half to go. Uppercut lands for Lewis. Crowd trying to chant Holyfield into yet another of his dramatic career moments. Holy, 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 they chant. Lewis trying to measure him in for an uppercut. Lewis has got to fight. Just can't think about winning a decision. This round is on the table for the taking. Nobody has made a big definitive statement in the first two minutes. If the fight is on the table here. If anything, Holyfield's had the better of it with sheer energy. Lewis Corner told him, don't hold anything back. He might not have anything to hold back. Yeah, you always got something you wish you had done in the hotel room. Two body shots by Holyfield. He sticks in a little uppercut. Lewis, in trying to land the one big shot, hasn't thrown enough punches in the 12th round. Lewis is holding on. Right hand lands for Lewis. Hits Again, and he ties Holyfield up inside. Lewis may think that he's won the fight and needs only to survive. We're going to find out in five more seconds of fighting. They fought a lot better fight this time. And the fans appreciate it. I had Lewis winning the fight. Much better fight. Holyfield fought better. I thought Lewis won it. You, George? 
It was a close fight. And when you're in a close fight like that, you just got to wait for the judges. Well, we already know who Harold Letterman thinks has won the fight. We'll get a look at his final scorecard in a few moments. In round 12, Holyfield landed 13 out of 46. Lewis landed 14 out of 35. So Evander was throwing more punches, and in the first minute of the round, he landed that right-hand shot and that left hook. And then later on in the round, a Holyfield uppercut landed flush. So even though the punch stat numbers were fairly even, and here's Tim Hallmark, Holyfield's longtime physical trainer, praying, praying in Holyfield's corner during the course of that 12th round. You just hope the judges are not swayed by what happened in the, the previous fight. Just score this fight the way it was tonight and the way it is tonight and forget about the past. Do you have a winner in your head, George? Yeah, this, it's a close fight this time. When a close fight, I'd go for either guy. But Holyfield did a lot better. And if he had not had the stigma of that last fight, I think there wouldn't be any questions that he could have pulled this off. You think Holyfield might have won the fight, George? If it had not been for the original thing, you see. A lot of people think that the way the first thing went would, would redound to Holyfield's advantage. Harold, how did you score it? <laughs> well, Jim, if the seven, it was a close fight. Four rounds to three. But eight, nine, ten, eleven belonged to Lennox Lewis. He landed the punches. He threw the shots. Better clean the punches at eight, nine, ten, eleven. Evander pulls out the twelfth. Eight rounds to four. One sixteen, one twelve. Lennox Lewis. All right, let's find out who really won it from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight boxing crowns an undisputed heavyweight champion as after 12 rounds of action we go to the scorecards with a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Jerry Roth scores at 115 to 113. Judge Chuck Joppa scores at 116 to 112. Judge at ringside, Bill Graham sees it 117 to 111. All three in favor of the winner and the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis. Fireworks. Had to be wondering why in the world would he be doing this fight in a, sec a second time anyway. I think they got it right this time, George. I it's believe done. Lewis was the winner. I think that uh, those scorecards matching fairly closely the Harold Letterman scorecard were faithful to the action in the fight. I think we can all be happy that we got legitimacy here tonight. And now let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with the undisputed heavyweight tip. All right. Thank you, guys. Congratulations, Lennox. You had some anxious moments after this fight, understandably. What were you thinking about before they announced the decision? Well, I was concerned because it went to the decision. I was really concerned because, you know, I realized that he wasn't doing any work in the beginning of the rounds, and he was trying to steal at the end of the round. So I didn't know what the judges were looking for. So I was trying to bide my time and score the points at the same time. He hit you with more shots in this fight some clean shots uh in the middle of the fight he seemed to daze you for a moment were you ever seriously hurt no i wasn't hurt i was just playing i was playing because i wanted him to sap his energy a bit and uh, it worked for a couple because i realized he was breathing after that what did he do to make this a more difficult fight well you know when i was jabbing him he was just uh, coming in with his head and trying to get in close with his head so I was concerned about his head at the same time backing up and trying to score my points. So you were not able to control the fight with your jab as you did last time because he jabbed more because he came inside more and so you had to engage him 
uh, in more exchanges in this fight? Yeah, when I was exchanging with him, he was keeping his head low and he was coming in straight with his head straight. So it was hard for me to engage some shots. Uh, at, at some times, I would just move him to the side and throw off a combination. I was trying to catch him with a jab as he was coming in. As we're standing here, 6,500 British fans traveled 5,000 miles to witness this moment. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking I've, I've got to go on with all the belts, for real. With all these fans coming here to support me, I've got to pull it out. So I have to push myself and get in there and really, you know, really dig down. The first unified heavyweight champion from Britain in a century. What do you think this will do for your legacy as a fighter, for the respect you have tried to win over the last decade? I think, uh, you know, I went through some trials and tribulations and, you know, enough people were trying to stop me. The Americans didn't want me to take it over to over the Atlantic to Britain, but I actually persevered and, and succeeded. Will you come back to America to defend your title? Yeah, yeah, because uh, the money's big over here. I realize the casinos are paying big money, but, you know, I might uh, fight one fight over in Europe first and make everybody come over there. What are you going to do to celebrate tonight? I'm just going to chill out, really. I don't really overdo it. Uh, just, I know a lot of people are going to want to talk to me and, and see me, and, and uh, I'm just going to relish the moment. Thank you very much. We relish this fight. Yes, big up Pirate FM, our crew. Big up. Yes. Jim. All right, Larry Merchant, part of the controversy after the first fight in New York was fueled by CompuBox numbers. So let's take a look at a statistical profile of this fight, not the be-all and end-all, because CompuBox can't measure how hard the punches are. But here are the numbers. Total punches, Holyfield landing, similar numbers to those in New York, only a little bit higher in both categories, 137 out of 416. Lewis, not quite as good as in New York but still with an edge over Holyfield. Jabs, Lewis's jab not nearly as apparent in this fight. Holyfield's jab much more apparent, particularly those which he threw to the body. And then we look at power punches, which doesn't mean they were bombs. It means that they were hooks, crosses, uppercuts, anything other than jabs. And Lewis with the edge there and a big edge in connect percentage over Holyfield, that in the end is probably what won him the fight. Let's go back to Larry Merchant. All right, again, thank you, Jim. Evander, in those moments waiting for the decision after what happened in March, what were your thoughts at that time? Had you, did you think you had won the fight, or did you just not know how the decision was going to go? Well, you know, the fact is, you know, I don't, I don't you know, I, first of all, I want to thank the Lord. And, uh, you know, he's good, his mercy. Lord, give victory, and, you know, man, give decision. And, but we have to live with him. But uh, in the front of the decision stuff, you know, I did all that I, I did all that I could. You know, I wasn't judging the fight. You know, and you know, like I said, you know, if, you know, my words don't twist. When things fall into the hands of the judges, you know, the, the judges make a decision to who they want to get. What do you believe in your heart and your head about the decision? Well, you know, it's it's hard it's hard to say. You know, the fact is that you know, I go in there and I I don't deserve the fight. I, you know, I do all that I can while I'm there. How did you make this? A more competitive fight than the last one in the eyes of many of us. Well, well, you know, the fact is that you know I was able to take away the jab. I didn't get hurt by the jab, and I was able to engage the jab and to be able to know that you know McCona tell me all he's trying to do is make you make the first move where he can just pop shots. And I was able to you know count it off his pop shots. So did that mean that he had to come in and stand in exchange with you, which is what you wanted? Well, he did. He did, and. Uh, do you, give him, do you give him credit for that? Because you have said in the past, well, he might not be all that willing to exchange. Well, you know, the thing is that, you know, Leonard, you know my whole thing, I, I'm always uh, give the fighter that I fight credit. You know, that man did all that he could. It's not like he had anything to do with the decision no more than to fight himself. And, you know, he was able to come back when I hit him some shots. I felt that I, I heard him a few times. He's able to rally back. You know, as I, I, I feel that the fight was more of a competitive fight than the last fight. Did his uppercuts hurt you because he seemed to throw a lot of them inside? Well, well, you know, no, no, because he was hitting me on the glove a lot of time, which, but with all this force, he gonna rise me up anyway. I have to go with it, you know, like that. And uh, you know, he got some good shots in, but I'm just a big thing in life is that you know you give your all. Do, all right, given that, do you feel good for yourself, even though you've lost the titles, that you gave everything you had? 
and, and after having said that in the last fight you couldn't well you know the fact is that you know in the last fight I gave all I had what I had that day and I gave what I had today and the fact of the matter is you know when it falls into the judge's hand you have decisions will you continue to fight well I don't know just like I say I would have to go back I have to go back and pray about it and, and you know and see what I want to do thank you as always Evander class act class fighter you've been great thank you to you Jim well they promised better judging here in Nevada and we got it unanimous decision from three top veteran judges 115 113 117 11 115 113 those scores pretty much in line slightly closer in two instances but pretty much in line with Harold Letterman's scorecard here's the great irony in New York Evander Holyfield got his draw by winning rounds 8, 9, 10, and 11 on all three scorecards. Lennox Lewis won this fight tonight by dominating rounds 8, 9, 10, and 11. George Foreman, there are a couple of obvious